you know, while you're sitting here smoking and reading the sign, could you insert a nickel? You know, a nickel for the cause. I'm down. I get it. And you're using toilet paper for free? Put a nickel in. Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. My name's Amanda. I'm a small reseller on eBay and now Knickknacks. And I'm a new YouTuber. And today I wanted to show you guys a few more items that I've pulled out. And these are a lot of uh, dollhouse furniture pieces and then a little bit of some just kind of novelty items as well or souvenir items and so I thought we would go over those real quick. I'll start by saying that a good majority if not if not just about all of this came from my mom's sister's husband my uncle and uh, they both passed in the last few years uh, but he was a plumber and owned his own company for many years and so naturally he had sort of an assortment or collection <laughs> of what would you say like bathroom humor items kind of thing when you sell in vintage and antique you may be sort of surprised uh, given that we think that uh, complete loss of any modesty is a new thing and no it's it's honestly not it was just maybe slightly uh, less it was a little less loud back in the day but nonetheless there was there's always been potty humor you know the stuff that you can't help but laugh at but you know is wrong that stuff we'll start with the doll furniture par portion of it uh, so this here is, uh, I want to say it's like a resin, but it's, it almost feels like a resin or plaster mix, maybe. I don't know. So I can't promise either way what it is, but it's just this little piece that you would, you know, set in a dollhouse bathroom and you can see the little kitty down here doing, doing kitty things. You got your toilet brush. Look how white that toilet brush is. I mean, they do a good job cleaning even the toilet brush. I've actually seen some actual new toilets come out these days that are like they're trying to bring back this look a little bit, which is interesting. But I, I mean, what does it matter, right? It's basically that's the tank of the toilet. It's just up above. It used uh, more gravity then to help ensure you're flush. So, uh, it usually had a pull chain off to the side. I'm sure a lot of you guys have seen them or, or photos of them or something. So um, I'm sure you're familiar with what I'm talking about. But that's what it is. It's, a, it's an old style. So, you know, I don't know when this piece itself dates to. This looks like it's all like one mold. Uh, it doesn't look hand carved. It looks like it was, you know, most likely like in a cast molded. So... I don't know what, what this would sell for, but this is one of the pieces where like I look at it then and you know, could it be a, you know, $500 piece? Maybe, I don't know, but I just, my, I doubt it. My gut tells me that's probably not, not the case. And so, you know, like I think if you were to pick this up in like a, uh, oh, you know, one of the stores that are geared for dollhouse, doll furniture, doll stores I guess maybe is what it would be so I think if you went to one of those this would probably be a five or ten dollar piece I don't know maybe less maybe slightly more I don't know but I just don't feel like it's a a real high quality deal I question even is it worth listing I may list it for ten bucks and see if anybody shows interest in it and if not be prepared to just drop that down a little bit somebody will eventually buy it you know, there's still a lot of people out there that make dollhouses and curate dollhouses and things like that, um, or small model projects and stuff. So there is a buyer for it. What they're wanting to pay for it, I, I don't know. We'll find out. So these little pieces here are older. I'm not going to tell you an age on them. Uh, to me, this doesn't look hand carved necessary certainly not like whittled okay so 
this piece here looks like a piece of like baseboard trim to me but all you need is a router and you can do that so and they've had tools like routers for a long time so could these still have been made in the 30s 40s or whatever sure maybe and the paint on them and the, the way the wear is on it makes me think that they could have that kind of age they could be much earlier though they could be from the 80s for all i know this one here is a turned piece and I'm going to assume this is a chamber pot. It could be a mixing bowl. You're not u really using it for either one, so it doesn't matter. I don't know, but I think that's what it was, was a chamber pot. If you can see that little kind of uh, pinhole sort of look in there, you know, that tells you there was an end of a blade. Uh, if you look at the kind of wood turning blade things uh, to make a hole like that, it's going to have like a little dagger end on it. And that's what you're seeing in the bottom of there is where that little dagger would have been poking. Things like that, little signs like that are, are good things to kind of just be aware of when you're looking at, at stuff. Because just the fact that I can look at this and tell, now I, don't ask me what type of wood it was. I have no idea, but I can tell that this was not likely to be whittled by hand. It looks like it had been sawed with a power tool. And so, you know, it's easy, especially when you see something made of wood and it, it looks old, right? But ignoring the fact that this style of toilet wouldn't have really been around in the 1800s, could you think, oh, this could be from the 1800s? Yeah, there's some elements to it that that lends a, a little bit of validity to. But when you look at a piece and you can see that it doesn't look like it was hand sawed uh, or whittled, hand carved it looks machined like this extremely straight line like that looks like perfect trim so those kinds of things will tell you that that it was a piece that was made with like a rotary tool or a power tool of some type and so those are little things that you know while I can't look at this and tell you what type of wood it was there's certain things to it that tell me it had machine work done on it so you're automatically right there putting yourself for the most part in 20th century probably you know 20s 30s to start and then look at the other other little characteristics of it to kind of say hmm okay what else can we determine about how old these really are this piece technically to me does feel a little bit older to it the paint on this one I don't know what kind of paint it is but it makes me feel like it's a little bit more of an acrylic maybe it's a little bit thicker than this one this one uh, if you've ever touched old paint it just has a different feel to it a thinner feel to it than paint more contemporary paint, even paint into the 80s and 90s, you know, for contem which would technically be vintage, but it's, uh, I don't know, it's like it just kind of got thicker over the years. And art people out there, please drop some comments, fill in the gaps of the ridiculousness that I'm, I'm saying here, but uh, these are just, it's certain things, this is part of what I was saying before about you just have to hold a piece you know, see it with your eyes, inspect it up close. And it that's stuff that just can't be taught really in a book. It just can't. There's something about literally the way a piece can like speak to you when you're in person with it that, that even a photo can't really do. I don't know. I thought I would just share that. The wee little tidbits of knowledge bouncing around in my head that, that help me to at least narrowed down far broader search into you know at least a couple maybe different little angles you could go in instead of taking it anywhere this piece here is dated from no less than the 70s you know when they started really using these upc codes on here but uh i would venture to say probably 80s or 90s it could be even more contemporary than that but it's the full full little setup his packaging is starting to come loose down here where the glue the adhesive is is giving way so you know it's got a little age to it with that 
nonetheless, all the pieces are still in there. Original packaging, never been opened. Fiber Crafts, number 4162. And they're made in China. You know, so all those details can help you pinpoint uh, a closer age range on, on these. But this is a full bathroom setup. There's like a soap dish, a toilet paper dispenser, a stool, a sink. Oh, it does look like one of the little sink handles broke off. How that happened, I don't know. Okay, this is hysterical. I don't know if I'll be able to get it to show it to you, but I'm gonna try. Okay, can you kind of see the stain uh, in here on the sink? Okay, and see how the handle's broken off and it's lying in the sink? So clearly there's no water hooked up to this. <laughs> Clearly it's never come out of the packaging. So how do they have like a water stain <laughs> on the sink in here? How did, how is that happening? <laughs> like, like the faucet broke and it stained the sink. I don't know. That's a good one. But yeah, you got your little mirror cabinet, your old school toilet here. You know, these were the style of first toilets that came out, how long they were used i don't know i feel like in the 30s and 40s we started seeing more standard type toilets but i wouldn't be surprised if maybe this was still out there to some degree but i want to say the 30s and 40s is when you started seeing what we think of more today as toilets and this here i was trying to figure out like is that a medical box what is that and i think it's actually like soap dish and the red dot i think is supposed to be the soap because it may be hard to tell in here, but you can see there's like a little rectangle down in there. And I think maybe they were supposed to paint that whole little rectangle red, but I don't know. And you got a chrome bar, which is, I don't know, guys, like you got chrome fixtures on everything else, but here they go, or not chrome, you got bronze or gold fixtures on everything else. And then, and then chrome, like, come on, man. Who styled this? Anyways, uh, Another one, I have no idea what the actual value of this would be. I almost kind of want to put something like this together with it and hell, maybe even the wood wood pieces too and put them in a, in a lot together and put them on auction and see. Because I don't know what... This does not look like high quality furniture to me. This doesn't even look like it's necessarily doll furniture like to play with it looks to me more like it's intended to set up like just a model miniature home but not not for a child like a house that's meant for display not play put that on a t-shirt so there's no markings on here anytime i see a base that looks like this generally that's sort of an indicator for me of just sort of a cheaper thing like probably made in China sort of piece that's that's and that's not to say it can't sell for money lots of stuff that was made in China shockingly sells for pretty good money so I don't ever say that with you know in like a disrespectful or uh like a true just no value lack lack of value entirely I think that you're you're gonna miss out on things having that mentality that being said a good portion of it is also not valuable, not not worth messing with. This is pretty weighted. If I had to guess, it's probably at a pound or just over. The handles in here are part of the mold of it. Then it has transfer print, uh, this floral design, and it's also down on the pedestal. Ooh, I didn't see that before. There's an impressed mark on here, 56. And I'm not even gonna try to get the camera to show it to you. My eyeballs just now found it, so I would say this maybe dates into the 80s but certainly tell me tell me if if you disagree i think this is intended to maybe be like a trinket dish it could be meant to be a soap dish uh, that looks a little bit small for holding like a bar of soap though i would think this is maybe meant to be like a bathroom trinket dish a bathroom jewelry dish you know you set your wedding ring in here before you get in the shower kind of thing and it sits on the counter. That's what I think this is versus doll furniture. It feels too large to be doll furniture. Like these feel too small to be dollhouse play furniture. This feels too large to be dollhouse play furniture. 
So I think this is intended more as a trinket dish or potentially a soap dish. Okay, so this piece here is a souvenir piece. We had a tub of fun at Knott's Berry Farm. It's definitely got that sort of 70s vibe with the glaze colors and stuff. I uh, got Knott's Berry Farm on the side here, Buena Park, California. I have not stopped to look this up to see what is the current state of Knott's Berry Farm. Some of you guys may know, and certainly drop it in the comments if you, if you do. So underneath this price sticker, you can see this other little sticker that lays under here, and it's one of those little round uh, stickers that's blue with like a white border, and it has, uh, in all caps, Japan written in white or, on, you know, on there. Yeah, I would guess this is a uh, 60s, 70s piece, somewhere in there. Got all these feet. And the original sticker, I can't read what the original price was, but, you know, souvenir pieces, guys, like, I don't typically hear people say, pick them up, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm right there with them. It's not something I would say, pick it up. I wouldn't have just picked this up saying, oh, that's probably going to resell for some amount. But there are those random one-offs, like, kind of like that plate that I showed you guys a couple videos back. There are some random one-offs that, that are worth the value. So I, I'm hesitant to ever just say, don't ever look at souvenir pieces because you may be pleasantly surprised. And it's such a wide array of, of souvenir pieces. This piece, I would probably, I wouldn't expect any more than at best $10. I would think it probably would sell potentially slightly less than that. I'm not really sure of its intended purpose. It could be for an ashtray. It kind of makes me think that with these little divots right here. So I'm assuming that's what it's really supposed to be is an ashtray, but I don't know. First. Okay, so this tub here, it's a plain tub, I guess technically claw-footed tub. It's meant to look like it has, you know, the plumbing in the back and all that. His little uh, knobby piece like this at some point got whacked off. These are metal. I don't know what metal they are. Just probably a pot metal. They're like uh, cast cast metal. Uh, it's kind of a, a heavier. It's not, not a thin porcelain, but it is, I would guess it's probably right around a pound. Pretty close to it. You know, it's, it's pretty standard. It's pretty basic. I don't know what the age is on it. They have been making things like this, you know, for quite some time. I mean, technically, the first baby houses, doll houses, were back, I think, in the 17th century. I mean, it's been a minute since people have been making doll houses. It's a, it's a vintage piece for sure, but exactly how old, I don't know. And if anybody out there does, please, please let me know. I can find similar ones listed on eBay. They usually are in a set and that's, I'm thinking of doing that with some of these pieces here. So I kind of feel like this sink, this pedestal sink matches, even as under clay looks pretty darn close. So I think these match. I think these are a set. I think these go together. And so I'm, you know, and if you look at their handles too, they look pretty darn close. All the handles on these pieces look pretty similar, but you know, when I look at the paint that's on them, the, ex the exact style of it, they look the same. So I think these two go together and I would plan on probably selling at least these two that way. But see how much brighter this gold is on here? That makes me feel like, and it's a, a light, more lightweight. This one is much denser than this one. They otherwise look dang near identical. This one is slightly, it's like a fourth inch shorter, roughly a fourth inch all the way around, smaller than that other one. But really the first thing I notice is the gold. Otherwise the handles look, look pretty darn similar, but this gold is not, uh, I don't even wanna say worn. I don't think it's like it's been played with, but it's just, it's darker, it's aged, like it's naturally, the color on it has just darkened with age and being exposed to the air. And these ones, well, somebody's been polishing these, I guess. I don't know, because these are, well, they're brighter. <laughs> but it just, it feels lighter. 
So I don't think this one, I think these two are about the same age. I don't think this one is. I think this is newer. And same thing on these ones. I think these ones are newer. But I think one of these at least may go with this uh, may go with this toilet and tub right here. And I'm going to show those to you guys in a second. Uh, specifically this, this one. But I don't know. Maybe, maybe both of these. So you can see the pedestals on these are ribbed. And same thing. This one here is just slightly like within a fourth inch all the way around it. Bigger than this one. The handles on here are the same. You see how they're very uh, straight and down compared to these ones that are curved. You see? So compared to these ones that are straight, but they're otherwise, they're metal. They're like still the cast metal and they look, they look pretty similar. I think that the handles on these ones, see how the handles sit real close to this ball right here? But then look at this one. See the difference? like it sits much higher up. So again, these ones are a little bit lighter. I'd say this one, which is the slightly bigger one. The back of this one, there's like a whole glaze skip right here. You can find those kinds of manufactured D-flaws on, what, what would you say? Name brand, well-known, you know, people, designers, artists, companies, whatever. You can find that on these, but or on their pieces that would be similar to this, but uh, generally those are the ones that they will toss. They're going to throw out or they're going to maybe sell in their gift shop, but they're going to mark it as like a second because it had a non-intended uh, design flaw on it. Your cheaper ones, Taiwan would be my guess of where these are probably made, Taiwan or China kind of thing. So those ones they still going to send this out and charge it. If they charged $5 for this back in the day, they would have charged $5 for this one too. This glaze skip would have made no impact on the, on the amount you would pay for it. It just, it, it came with it that way. So these two pieces here, I think if you look at that, I'm not sure. Do these go together? This makes me think it's newer. These handles match these handles again. I don't know. I'm thinking of putting one or both of these sinks with the matching handles with this and then the toilet. So let's look at the feet on here. Like again, the porcelain looks pretty similar. Doesn't mean it is. Does, it, that doesn't mean anything, but it, I'm just looking for like if the bottom of this one looked aged, looked, looked dirty, you know, stained and stuff just with age with time then I would start thinking this piece was older. It's a thick ceramic. It's a thick porcelain. This little gold ring here, this would have had a, another like smaller chain link kind of hanging down an inch or two, and it would have had probably a little handle uh, on the bottom. This here that looks like wood, this is, this is plastic. It's kind of that soft rubber feeling plastic, but they're trying to give it that 30s, you know, feel, 30s, 40s feel with that red and stuff and making it look fancy with the, with this. I'm thinking because of that design and because of that design, I'm thinking these go together. Okay. And then I think that because these handles match the handles on the tub, I think these sinks go with this. So I'm thinking I'm going to sell these all, you know, these four together. Before I show you this, uh, Next one, I have a short little, um, I don't know, minute and a half or so, maybe less, video that I'm going to show you guys so that you kind of have an idea of, of what this is. Well, these boxes were purchased by my father back probably in the early 40s because he had a plan to build a doll's house. Okay, and he was going to build it for you. Yes, he was. Okay. And he bought all of the furniture so that he could build the doll's house. Okay. He was a busy young lawyer. He did not get... The doll's house built. He did let me play with some of the furniture. with the furniture in my doll's houses as long as I was very careful and didn't lose anything. Well, the result of the, him not building it really is that it was kept in such fine condition, and we have all the original boxes. We have basically the full contents of a house. We have the living room, the kitchen, the dining room, bedrooms, everything. 
And Tootsie Toy was a company in Chicago. Doust was the, the company, and Tootsie Toy was their trade name. And Tootsie Toy specialized in small, little playthings like toy cars, planes, little trains, things like that. But they also made a line for girls, and they would make these dollhouse furnishings for their own houses as well as what your father had planned to do with them. They really started making their vehicles in the teens and 20s. This set comes around in the 1930s, and the style of the furniture and of all the furnishings are very 1930s. And what's interesting about Doust and Tootsie Toy was they were able to find an economic way to mass produce furniture. We have an original price tag. That entire set was $1.25. Now maybe the smaller sets were a little bit cheaper. And they were made out of cast metal. It's die cast, very easy to, to cast, and you could get a lot of detail. If you look at the upholstered furniture, they use like a flocked surface, mm -hmm. so it looks soft, but it's really still a die cast piece of furniture. And then when you go into the kitchen, it's just so detailed. They have a monitor top refrigerator. They have the type of stove they would use in a day, a Hoosier type looking cupboard, just everything that would be in that period of house. We always talk about boxes and condition, and you obviously have both here. Each set is conservatively valued at about, I'd say, two to three hundred. But when you really put it all together, that starts to add up. There's eight sets here. I would say that an auction estimate would be $2,500 to $3,000 for everything because you have all eight of these. Oh, my. <laughs> I'm thrilled. I don't think my father would be able to believe it. <laughs> but this one here is a Tootsie Toy toilet. And uh, so, yeah, it's cast metal. And it's the only part of the bathroom that I got. So I don't know that it's worth a whole lot all by itself. Uh... I, I don't know. It may be one that, like, I lot up some of this stuff that I think are kind of one-offs. Even though Tootsie Toy itself carries some value, yeah, but I've only got the toilet. So, what value there is in him, I'm not entirely sure. Okay, so this one here is an ashtray. Told you guys, one thing you are going to come across frequently, like, really frequently, are ashtrays. They come in all shapes, sizes, forms. They're everywhere. They are everywhere. So this one here is by Park Craft Burlington, Iowa. And I don't know what the C was. I don't believe that's just a copyright C. I think that's like the company mark probably. A lot of this out here was cold painted. This part here says butts. But that's all that I can still read on it. But clearly, it, that's what it was, was an ashtray. And I don't know if on this part, you would have stuck your cigar, maybe, or something right in here. But this is supposed to be uh, like a urinal bedpan, okay? This is an old school bedpan. Uh, on here, it says Nebraska State Fair, 1958. Like in my other video where we kind of talked about ashtrays and stuff, these are used mostly as trinket dishes of, of some sort of variety of a trinket dish whether it's holding your keys your change your jewelry whatever what your candy whatever i don't know if i'd put candy in here but go for it uh it's just a comical novelty bedpan why a bedpan at the state fair i don't know but sometimes that's the fun history and in looking into stuff because you say why in the heck did they put a bedpan at the state fair why not a teddy bear figurine why not you know of all the things well one it's an ashtray okay how many different ways can you do an ashtray well it turns out there's a lot but they get creative with it like this but what else was there going on state fairs were often where uh, new inventions new products and stuff were brought to display you know you think of the world's fair and stuff too they did these at the state fairs too a lot of times they were done at the state fairs and then eventually went and did a world fair some of them so then it makes you wonder okay was there a new you know porcelain factory in town advertising was there uh you know a new medical products or who knows who knows but that's like that's the getting lost in the weeds of why? Now, is this information necessary for you to resell? 
No, it's absolutely not necessary. Do not start sweating. It's not necessary. This is just, you know, like I said before, most people who sell specifically vintage and antique things, it's not only that it looks cool or that kind of stuff. It's the history that goes along with it and, and the why. Why was it this, done this way? Why is it not done this way now? Why is it, you know, just all those things. And yeah, that's the part that you can get lost for hours down rabbit holes trying to figure out and a lot of times come up still yet empty. So, you know, so that piece has some age. It's got some craisin, you know, mild craisin on here to prove that age. But, you know, people could use that for anything. Is anybody looking for... A 1958 Nebraska State Fair item? Probably, probably not. This is going to still have some collectability to it, though, for people who collect State Fair items, Nebraska State items, uh, just novelty ashtrays. I, I could think of a handful of things that, at least, a handful of different collector bases that potentially would have interest in it. So it's a good tobacchiana piece. Okay, so this one here, now in person, this red is slightly darker. It, lo it looks a little bit brighter on camera than what it actually looks like to the naked eye. This one is made in Germany, and I think this little impressed mark, it looks like it says 1010 on it. Uh, I had to get out my, not microscope, my magnifying glass to like really try to figure out what the heck did that say and it says for ladies only and the seat doesn't lift up it's it's part of the mold i'm assuming this is an ashtray again i could be wrong it could be a toothpick holder i don't know it certainly could be used as a toothpick holder that's for sure i mean i could think of friends of mine who would find this an awesome toothpick holder so i, I a part of my mind says who would want a toilet toothpick holder? But then I know people who would, who would definitely want a toilet <laughs> toothpick holder. I know people who would be super stoked about it. So believe me, there's there's people out there for everything. Everything. Uh, because this is Germany, it's not West Germany. Uh, and it doesn't say, you know, made in and stuff like that. This is telling me probably pre-World War II. The color of the red on here, like I said, it looks a little brighter on camera than it actually looks like to the naked eye. It looks a little more tomato soup color, really, to me. It's under glaze painted, not cold. But that coloring, it tells me I'd, I'd probably be thinking 30s. I'm kind of feeling Depression Era in there. Oh, I wanted to show you guys this here real quick. And if you guys think I should list it, please put in the comments to list it because I'm, I don't know. So it's an old chamber pot, okay, is what it's supposed to be. And it has one of those blue sticker Japans on it. At some point in time, it cost a dollar. On here, it says, you never had it so soft. So in here, there's a little piece of it that's kind of that's kind of come undone from from the inside there but if you can tell that is what's called kid leather i have a lot of uh women's driving gloves that are are made of kid leather uh shoes used to be made with kid leather a lot of like soft leather products back in the day dolls were made with kid leather i'm not a fan of of it for those things but it is what it is and nonetheless while I don't condone the practice of animal massacre for fancy things, it is very soft. I mean, you can't, you just can't deny that. It is very, very soft. And that is part of the reason why it was frequently used on things. Whoa, there's a hair. It's letting hair loose. So, and this I'm sure is some probably rabbit or some kind of fur. It's some, feels like some kind of a down fur. Very, very soft. So... Uh, the problem with it, it's definitely got this chip right here by the handle. Now, you know, obviously, it's not really something, if you were just displaying this, that you would see. Yeah, I'm not sure what the point, what the point of having this, I mean, obviously it says you never had it so soft, but like, this doesn't seem like a very functional toilet seat to me. I don't know. Seems like that would get dirty and need to be replaced frequently so probably not the best design but 
somebody thought it up and they thought it was right on point. So there you go. But yeah, that chip is why I don't, I don't know. I could probably list it for a couple bucks. Is it worth the fees and stuff at that point? I don't know. If anybody out there has thoughts on that, drop it in the comments and, and let me know. Because I'm happy to list it. I just, usually when you have something, you know, damaged like that, not only is it not a high dollar piece to begin with, but it's damaged. So I'd be happy to give it to somebody. Put it that way. So this one here, I don't think had any markings on it. There's kind of a bisque sort of feel down here. It's got the gold trim, so I don't know. Probably this is dates in the 40s or 50s would be my guess. This advertisement thing on here, it says Pan Hard Levaser, Levaser, 1895. And I'm assuming that that is this type of vehicle that's on here. You know, dude in his boulder hat, looking all dapper and whatnot. But I believe this was an ashtray. So this was your ashtray part. And then up here would have been like your cigarette or lighter holder area. You know, it feels like there's some minor flea bites up here. But I honestly, I don't know how much of it's actual flea bites because it feels or it looks like it's, it's for the most part, like the gold is still over it. So it may have just been rough. I mean, these would have been cheap produced, mass produced, and sold as, as novelty items. Uh, this one here is another ashtray. This is your tray part, little cigarette holder part. And then this here, and I'm not sure what this was for. Like, could you, is it like a wall pocket kind of thing going on? I don't know. It's not marked. Uh, it's un the yellow's under glaze. It's got the gold on here. Uh, this one, I would guess, is probably right around a pound in weight. So it's a little bit heavier, thicker stuff. It looks like there's a little firing crack down here. Not a crack that would have happened from age or wear, but uh, when the piece was being fired in the kiln. This is in great shape. I mean, there's very little wear to the gold trim on the toilet. Uh, there's a little bit of craisin on it. Very mild, though. Very, very mild, though. Uh, I think that this, it's a happy yellow color. It's just a happy color. I think that that is a nice bright piece that could still be used in someone's bathroom. Um, I don't know, use it as a toothbrush holder. I don't know. I'm sure that people could come up with lots of fun, cool things for it though. All right, so this one here is a bank actually. And his little rubber piece has seen better days. I'm probably honestly just gonna toss it. Just looking at the fade on the gold gilt there says five cents, please. And that's where you put your coin in. Uh, of course, down here at the base is where the plug went. It says Japan impressed right here. I don't know if I'll really get it to show up on the camera though. And then it also has this little made in Japan sticker still hanging in there. It's still there. Uh, so you drop your coin in the top here. This notice on here, it says, notice this bathroom cost a head of money. Fancy plumbing takes a lot of dough. You may think it kind of funny, but please folks pay as you go. And so this, <laughs> this part here is, you know, like a, like an ashtray for your cigarette there. But you know, while you're sitting here smoking and reading the sign, could you insert a nickel, you know, a nickel for the cause. I'm down. I get it. And you're using toilet paper for free. Put a nickel in. I think that's hysterical. I, I love that. Uh, again, I think who in their right mind is still as funny as it is, as cute as it is, who in their right mind is going to put it in their bathroom. And then I remember again, I know plenty of people that would put that in their bathroom and make it the shrine of the bathroom. So again, there's pe <laughs> there are people out there, but fun, cool. I mean, I would put that in the category of kitsch, right? Like just a, a fun, cool piece. These pieces were extra in a lot. They're not too thin of a metal. Uh, they do have a gold sticker somewhere on here. Yeah, made in Taiwan, ROC, Republic of China. So that puts them before the 90s for sure. Sorry, I'm probably making you guys dizzy. I'm just sitting here playing with it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Woo! 
it's just a little dine-in set or even probably maybe patio set. And it's got this mesh on here. And the seats of the chairs have that same mesh. But, I mean, it all sits pretty flat. I, I don't know the value on this. I haven't done a lot of investigating in it. Uh, I mean, it is vintage. Uh, made in Republic of China. It is vintage. So, you know, I'm sure that there's some use for it. I think what, what adds interest to it, for me anyway, what I think adds interest to it, is the design. Like, it just kind of has that that vintage, you know, patio furniture uh, design to it. Like, it looks kind of 40s or, or so to me. These pieces right here, I don't remember if I got these in a thrift store. I feel like I got them in an estate auction lot. So let me start with one, because I don't know how good I can hold both up at the same time. But these, I believe, date to the 70s. The back of it says... I think it says Brig Tone on the back. Mechanical Mirror Works Incorporated, 41 Madison Avenue, New York, New York, 10010. Not, oh gosh, There's so much reflection. These are novelty pictures, okay? So this one here is a woman bathing a child. These are not true photographs. These were done like in a studio with props and, and the whole thing. And they were done as novelty pieces, more or less to hang in somewhere like your bathroom, you know. That one there's kind of cute. Mom bathing her kid. This one here is where it kind of gets a little saucy. Have your children look away. I'm gonna give you a second. <laughs> it's nothing that bad, but it's a little bit saucy. So, and you can see how they kind of like uh, altered the mirror to give it that silver fade loss of the antique mirrors, you know. But she is got her hand over her eyes. I'm guessing the stove here is where she warmed up his bath water. And he's just sitting there, I don't know, probably after a hard day work with his stogie in his mouth, in his barrel. You know, nothing too, too saucy in there, but she's in her under drawers and he's... I'm assuming wearing not a whole lot and his he's wearing his bucket. That's what he's wearing. I think that says brig tone on the back. It's hard to tell from the print. I don't think there's any cracks or anything to the glass. And as far as I know, these date to like the late 60s and 70s, something like that. So I had one more thing I wanted to show you. There was a estate sale auction that I had gone to and it became very apparent that one of the individuals, at least, in this uh, estate, whose, whose belongings were in this state, was a veteran. Um, there were some, some things in there that were definitely World War II, and some things that were more Vietnam, um, and probably a little in between, honestly. So, <sighs> this here's a gag gift, okay? It's called a patent alarm clock. And you can see it's got its wick up here. And one, two, three, four, and it goes all the way down to 11, okay? AM on all of them. Directions for use. I'm gonna read this to you. Just before going to sleep, instead of placing the candle in the candlestick, stick it in your rear up to the proper mark, up to the proper mark, <laughs> Indicating the hour on which you wish to wake up. Then light the candle, lay on your face, and go to sleep. Note, do not fart in your sleep or you'll blow out the candle. <laughs> so I will say again that in the world of selling vintage and antiques, you're going to come across a lot <laughs> that you don't know what the hell to do with. I think this is hysterical. I, I think this is an old gag gift. This was mixed in with a lot of more war memorabilia type gag gifts. And I don't know who would buy this and be like, that? Next birthday, man. You know, like, I don't, I don't know who's that person. But I, again, stop and think. I know some people that if they saw this video right now, they would already be plotting and planning the next event and it would involve this candle in some form or another so 
I don't know. There's people, there's people out there for it, guys. I don't know. And, uh, <laughs> it is, stuff like that is what, what keeps the treasure hunt and the vintage and antiques world a little bit saucy, spicy, and, and fun. Keeps it interesting anyway. I think that's all for now. <laughs> but as always, guys, uh, anybody who s sticks around and watches the whole video, I, I greatly appreciate it. I really enjoy putting out these videos for, for you guys and, uh, just kind of being able to go through some of this stuff. And I, I love to hear your guys's feedback on it. Uh, you know, please drop, drop comments on anything, you know, on these pieces. It, it's not just for my benefit, but it's about, you know, sharing the information. And I happen to believe a lot of times that, that word of mouth is, is a pretty good resource, you know, to be honest. So yeah, please drop comments and, and add any details or information or, you know, what have you on it and uh, on any of this stuff. Or if anybody's interested in any of it, please feel free to, to let me know. And then please go over and check out my eBay store and my knickknack store and stuff. And, and uh, you I don't have to buy anything at all. Don't feel any pressure to buy anything, but go over and take a look at it and let me know. Let me know your guys' thoughts on it. I'll be getting this stuff listed probably, I don't know, through the rest of the evening once I'm done with this and have that in there for you guys to, to look at also. I do currently have one auction going on. It is the Winston LCD check writer, you know, calendar thing and the Newport save a, not save, Amanda. It's share a penny, dang it. I'm all about saving the dang pennies and it's a share a penny tray. So I have those in a lot uh, on auction and it has, I think two days, two or three days left on it. So go over and check that out. Uh, I think it had one bid for the $6 asking price so far, but it has a few watchers. It ran through, you know, I had it up last week and nobody bid on it. It had a a few people that viewed it, but not, not many. And then this time around, it's got, I don't know, 14 or 15 views, something like that so far. It's got one person that's placed a bid for the $6 and it's got one or two watchers on it, I think. So I don't know. We'll see. It's, it, it's going to sell regardless whether it goes for the $6 or more is yet to be determined. I don't know. Why did it get attention this time versus last time? I don't know. I did nothing different. It literally just relisted. So it has the exact same information. It's the exact same photos. It's the exact same auction. So I don't know why a week ago it got really virtually no interest. And this time, at least some interest. I don't know that there will be a bidding war on it or anything crazy, but at least, at least there's some interest. I didn't promote it. I didn't I have no rhyme or reason for what the difference is between last week and this week. I think some of it just boils down to kind of like I said before in another video, you want to be cautious uh, using auction results to comp your stuff because while it could be at, at market value, it could, it could be a lot more than regular market value and it could be a heck of a lot less than market value. Most of the time when you go to sell things via auction, kind of the rule of thumb is expect to get half or less of what it's, it's, it's worth usually. And that's okay. You know, if, if that's, again, it's like I said before, if you're never able to get a deal, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing. So, uh, you know, it's just, that's kind of part of the game and everything, but I want to, I want to make sure and state that, uh, because I think it's important when you're looking at comps and I don't really hear other people always saying that or, or, uh, bringing that point up, you know, they'll show comps, but the, there is a difference between what somebody's willing to pay outright for it and what somebody's willing to put in a bid for, you know? So I just like to draw that, that little bit of distinction to, I don't know, maybe, maybe help a little bit. Uh, cause it's something I, I have to remind myself of constantly when I'm looking at comps and stuff and pay attention to, is it a buy it now price or is it an auction? price that it's sold for. So yeah, I've got that going. I've got, uh, I don't know how many things, 20 give or take in my knickknack store so far. 
Uh, I added a bunch more onto eBay also, but yeah, go over and check those out. The links will be in the video description here, and they're also on my, uh, I don't know what it's called, About Me page on YouTube. You know, as always, guys, I enjoy making the videos for you. I enjoy showing you things. I may not always have all the answers for them, but I enjoy showing them to you. I enjoy going, going through them, and if you guys have any questions or uh, comments or anything, you know, please, please drop them down there. And, uh, other than that, I'll see you guys on the next one.